Hi and welcome back. It's Vicky here and today I'm back with a new art journal layout. So I will be working on my Moleskine sketchbook and you can find a link to that down below in the description area. And I will be playing with my jelly plate. So this comes in uh, various sizes. I am going to use the 6x6 one. I'm going to peel off the backing front and back and I'm going to place it on top of my glass mat. This is going to ensure that it's not going to move on me while I'm working on it. For printing I'm going to work on parchment paper. This is also known as daily paper and uh, it's uh, quite big. This is 12 by 16 as you can see but uh, you can find it in uh, various sizes. I'm going to fold it in half and in half again so this way I'm going to make sure that I make the most out of this uh, paper since I will be working only with a 6x6 uh, um, jelly plate. So I'm going to use my trimmer there and cut off the folds, just a little strip. So I end up having four different parchment papers to work on top of them. I will be creating more of them. So I have enough when I need them, since uh, when you start creating backgrounds, it gets so addictive that you can create uh, way more than you actually need. For acrylic paints, I chose to go with DecoArts from their media line. These are fluid acrylic paints and they work great on uh, the jelly plate. I have also my daily papers, as well as some printer paper just to clean off my brayer. So the idea here is to add some paint on top of my jelly plate, roll it and blend it with the brayer and then I'm going to do some printing on the daily paper. The great thing of working on daily paper is that uh, it's quite thin so when I create the backgrounds that I really like I can then use that paper and stick it on top of my art journal. This is not going to add bulk on top of my art journal and I can play around with different patterns, have fun with my media and with different techniques and then whatever I like I can use it on my art journals. Now today I had this idea of creating a winter page and that's why I'm working for my background with uh, shades of blue. I'm starting with the lighter colors and I will uh, go ahead and add darker colors as I go on. I am uh, going to add in the mix a little bit of white as you can see as well as a little bit of cream later on. Now since I want my background to be quite subtle, I'm not going to go crazy with colors here and I'm not going to do lots of uh, different techniques to make my backgrounds look very busy. And if you are wondering which colors I'm using every time, you can see them printed on screen and you will find links down below as well. Now as you can see I'm working on the first layer of those uh, daily papers and all I'm doing is just adding some uh, color there, just a basic background. And after creating lots of those basic backgrounds, I will go ahead and start adding some texture. For that I will be using my art foamies and uh, these are actually stamps that you can uh, work with acrylic paint. So I'm touching my foam stamp on the darker color and then moving on to the lighter area and this way I am creating a lovely pattern on top of my jelly plate. Now I'm going to print it in one of the daily papers that I have created previously and I get a lovely textured background. Now I'm going to do another technique and this time I'm going to use the jelly plate as an ink pad. So I'm touching my uh, foamy there and then I'm stamping on a daily paper and this way I end up having two different designs. One on my jelly plate that I am going to print right now and another one on the daily paper that I was stamping at. And I continued playing around with uh, different shades of blue. As you can see, I went all the way to darker blue. Now I'm going to stamp off most of this ink. And then I'm going to use my foam stamp again. And I will end up having lots of backgrounds to choose from, all the way from lighter to darker blue. Now let's take a quick look on the stamp foamies that I used. These come in a set and you can see they have beautiful designs. You don't have to wash them if you don't want to. You can just use a baby wipe and they are good to go for many many more uses. And I love them just because you can use them with acrylic paint. They are perfect for mixed media applications. Now let's go ahead and take a look on all the backgrounds that I have created. And you can see that I, I start from the lighter all the way to the darker ones. I do have some texture on all my backgrounds and the interesting designs. 
and you will see now how I'm going to use them on my pages. Now I'm going to tear them off into strips and I'm not going to measure anything, I'm just uh, randomly tearing them off and um, of course you can use them as they are, just stick them on your um, layout. Instead I decided to do something more interesting which is going to give even more texture and interest on my background. I have created stacks with those strips and um, I'm uh, going to use one of those stacks for one page and the other stack for the other page and I have actually placed them kind of um, from darker to lighter. I'm just going to chop off the edges here since I don't want to use those and I'm going to stick everything down using my matte medium. I love using my matte medium just because it's not glossy, it's going to dry totally clear and matte and um, I'm going to apply them with those um, uh, brushes by Tim Holtz. And when you are working with uh, gel medium just because it acts like a glue, you don't want to leave your brush standing there for a long time. Uh, so I always like to have a jar of water next to me and um, I am going to place that uh, brush inside and it's going to wait for me until I finish my layout and then I can go to the sink and wash my brush. And I have almost completed covering up one page all the way from lighter to darker backgrounds. Now I am going to repeat the same process for the other page and you can see here the finished result. Now I have lots of leftovers, these strips are uh, going on a box along with other daily paper printed uh, backgrounds that I can always look through and uh, use on future projects. And I know that these uh, strips would look great on a summer themed project just because they remind me of uh, the sea. Now I'm using my scissors to chop off all the excess and here is my finished background, I just love all the texture that I got. And I don't know if you can see that there are some wrinkles that do add even more texture on my page. Now just because I'm going for a winter background I like to add some snow. So I am diluting um, with water some gesso and I'm going to go crazy with splashes here. And uh, as you can see I'm working on my glass mat which is perfect for mixed media and uh, art journaling. So here is the finished project after uh, doing all the splashes. And now I'm going to go ahead and use these dyes. These are by my favorite thing snowflake dyes. And um, I'm going to create my own stencil. This is going to be a border stencil. I thought that uh, I wanted to frame my layout somehow with, uh, with uh, snowflakes. And just because I didn't have the border that I had in my mind I decided to to create my own so I just used my um, three dies there one after the other and now with my craft knife I'm going to cut them in half so I will end up having two stencils for my borders and you will see in a minute how I am going to use that now actually I used cardstock for creating the stencils which means that after using it for this project I'm going to throw them away but you can definitely use acetate and these are going to be reusable in that case so I'm going to use my embossing paste, you can use modeling paste, anything you like for adding texture. And I'm going to apply it with spatula all over the edges. In some areas I am applying uh, the embossing paste uh, with a stencil so I get that beautiful border of the snowflakes. But in other areas I'm just going to apply uh, embossing paste with my spatula so I will not have uh, this repeated snowflake all over the place. Now of course doing the border is something that you can do at the end after you finish uh, the page but um, at this stage I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do for uh, the main focal point so I was just playing around. So here is the finished result after adding all the border around my page. I'm going to leave this uh, to dry. You can go ahead and uh, heat set it but that really depends on the embossing paste or the modeling paste that you used. So make sure that it doesn't bubble up on you. Now I am going to use this craft uh, cardstock to draw a branch. Now I don't know if you can see the pencil line there but trust me it is there. I'm just not pressing my pencil at all. And uh, then I'm going to use my scissors to cut this out. I have placed this cardstock on top of my layout so I have a rough idea of how long I want this branch to be. Actually I need this branch to start from one page and go all the way to the other page. And uh, actually collage is one of my favorite techniques. I always like to create my focal points on different pieces of paper and then stick them on top of my backgrounds. So here is my branch ready to go. 
And now the idea is to create a little red cardinal bird for my branch. For that I will be using the same techniques with my acrylic paints and my jelly plate, but you can definitely use a tie or a stamp for the bird or the branch if you don't feel confident about your drawing skills. And uh, you can also find images online, print them out and stick them on top of your backgrounds. I am going to leave links down below to both the die that I showed you of that little birdie as well as the stamps by Stampendo and uh, that you can uh, definitely use instead of drawing your own. So now the idea is to create uh, my own pattern paper, monochromatic in uh, red uh, shades. I used uh, cadmium red hue for the beginning just to cover up uh, completely my paper. And by the way, this is watercolor paper that I had uh, just on my table here. Now I am going to work with a slightly darker color, I apply it with my brayer all over my jelly plate and then do some patterns. So as I'm doing that, I am also stamping on another piece of paper that I can use later on for another page. Now this didn't make a lot of difference just because those uh, red hues were very close to each other. So I'm going to switch to an even darker color. And I am actually creating this pattern paper so that I can use it to draw my bird and uh, cut it out to be my focal point. And uh, by creating this pattern paper, I do make sure that I have repeated patterns on both my birdie, my focal point, as well as on the background. And these little details are going to bring all my different elements that I'm going to stick on the page together. So I end up having something going on on my background, but uh, at the same time is quite subtle, just like my background, and I can use that for creating the bird. So I'm using my pencil here to draw a cardinal, and um, you probably can't see the pencil line since I never press my pencil too hard. So now I'm going to follow the line, and I'm going to cut out my little bird with the scissors. Cardinals do have a, a lovely long tail, so I'm making sure that I do have a long one here. And now that I have uh, both my branch and my bird ready to go, I can stick them down on my layout. For sticking down everything, I always use my matte medium. Now this branch is going over the fold and uh, just because it's made out of cardstock and uh, this is not thin, I like to uh, cut it in two pieces so that I can stick each piece separately on another page and I know that everything is nicely stuck down. So now I'm covering everything with my matte medium, I'm going to make sure that everything is dry and then I can go back with my big brush markers and do the shading. You can see which color I'm using on your screen. And if you have uh, seen my art journals previously, you know that I love these brushes and this technique. I am uh, going to talk a little bit about the brushes as I am working on my shading. So um, these are actually Indian ink and uh, you can move them around with your finger. You can move them with water and your brush, but once they dry, they are permanent. And this is the property of them that I actually love. And I also love the fact that uh, they are transparent, which means that you can do the shading, but it's not going to cover up any, any black lines if you happen to stamp something. And they actually come in two different styles. The one that I am using with a big brush tip and uh, another one with a finer tip. They both have the same ink. They just have a different nib and a different barrel. Now they can uh, become quite expensive. Uh, you can get them for about $6, but they are on sale right now. And you will find links down below to about three and a half for each of those big brush markers. Now, actually, I never changed any of those. I use them for my classes as well. And uh, um, just because you add so little on every focal point, uh, they never dry on me. They have never dried anyway. I have them for years and they are uh, in perfect condition. Now I'm uh, going to add some uh, black details on my bird since this is a cardinal. And um, if you look for cardinals online, you will see that they have that black mask, as I call it, on their face. And now with my uh, black thin pen, I'm going to go and do some uh, lines that I always like to do around my um, branch and my bed. I'm also going to give him some details so that you can tell where the um, wing is. And uh, I'm going to put on some music so you can see the finishing touches. I'm also going to bring in my white gel pen and add some highlights here and there since this is something I always like to do.
And since I have so much snow all around my border, I need to have some snow on top of my branches. So I'm using my spatula to add some with my embossing paste. Now, if you are wondering, the embossing paste is going to give some texture and dimension on both my pages, but this is not going to prevent the pages from closing or the book, it's not going to turn the book to bulky. But uh, I know that uh, this uh, layout, today's layout, would be great to uh, recreate on a canvas. It could be a great mixed media project to hand as a gift or to decorate your house for Christmas. And uh, you can actually keep it as it is and uh, it's going to be a nice wintery scene or you can take it further just like I am going to do now and I'm going to turn it into a Christmas theme. So I'm going to give him a little present to hold and for that I'm just going to cut out little squares from this pattern paper that I created earlier. I'm going to poke a hole just underneath his beak so that I can thread through a um, white uh, string. So I'm going to cut out a piece there and I always like to have different textures on my pages or things that uh, go through the page. I think they always light some, add something uh, interest to look at. And uh, this is the reason, the main reason why I don't work back to back on my pages in case I want to do something like that. So if I had the birdie on the other page, on the first page, then I wouldn't be able to do that if I was working back to back on my previous uh, layout. So anyway, I'm going to stick that down just with a piece of uh, double sided tape. I'm going to chop off the excess and then I'm going to stick my little present on top of that again with matte medium. I do get uh, many, many comments and many emails asking me to share more art journal layouts. I know that these videos are very popular on my channel and I can tell that from your feedback. So I am planning to share more for uh, the next year. It's just that uh, my videos end up uh, way too long just because my style of art journaling is very detailed and uh, I have uh, so many steps to show you. Now let me know in the comments below if long videos on art journaling bother you so maybe I can skip some steps on video editing and make my videos uh, way smaller. Now as you can see I have uh, tied the bow and stick that down. I have also cut out a um, snowflake that I'm going to stick there and this snowflake is actually going to play the role of the letter O so you can read the word joy there and uh, I used uh, die cuts for the J and the I but you can uh, stamp them you can uh, use stickers if you have so I am going to do some detailing on uh, my gift just like always with my white gel pen and uh, some doodling around with my black thin marker and I forgot to do some shading so I ended up doing it at the end with my Indian Red Big Brush Marker and now I am going to punch out a few little circles from that uh, pattern paper that I created earlier and these are going to end up being uh, little berries that I'm going to stick along my branch and this is going to balance out a little bit the lack of red on the left page. So as always I'm going to stick them down with my matte medium and then when the medium is totally dry I'm going to go with my thin black marker to add some uh, lines around the berries and some white uh, highlights at the top as if they have snow on top of them. And this is the finishing touch, this is the layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired to create something for uh, the winter or for the Christmas season. Here are some close-up photos on uh, the project that I made for today. Make sure to visit my blog as you will find more photos there of this project as well as uh, links to every supply that I used for creating my layout. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.